So welcome to another Let's Play, this time for Mystery World Dizzy, a game that we developed on the NES in 1992, but sadly was never released. So we thought we'd come along to the National Video Game Arcade here in Nottingham, a place that celebrates everything that's great about video games. This year they're launching the Dizzy exhibition to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Dizzy, and what better place than this to talk about Mystery World Dizzy. But a little background first. Our favourite game had been Fantasy World Dizzy. That was Dizzy number three. That had started life on the Amstrad and the Spectrum and then uh, it was converted to the Commodore 64 version. Um, you can see that it was still flip screen and not scrolling screen that the Commodore should have been able to achieve. This was then copied onto the ST and the Amiga. And we'd always fondly looked back on this game. On finishing Fantasy World Dizzy, it was the end of the 80s and the end of the 8-bit computers. We felt we needed to move on. But where? Should we move to the 16-bit computers, the ST and Amiga ourselves, or should we move to some other market? We visited CES, and we were absolutely amazed at the dominance of Nintendo. They were selling games that we felt we could easily write for a huge amount of money and selling them in their million. Codemasters um, brought out a device called the Game Genie for the Nintendo and it looked like it was going to go gangbusters. There. So we decided to produce Fantastic Dizzy, a combination of the Dizzy games we had made to date for this new market, the NES console. It took eight months, we worked at Codemasters, we worked sadly in a horrible porter cabin. Um, and we were able to release this um, in 91 to great critical acclaim, uh, getting a review score of 92% and in fact a um, Game Players Award. So the cartridges were very expensive to produce, which meant the games were expensive in the shops. But Codemasters came up with a brilliant idea called the Aladdin cartridge, where most of the cartridge was in one device, and then you could sell games much cheaper that plugged into this. But this did mean that they wanted a big catalogue of games, and we had a sort of schedule of producing a game for every two months. So we decided to open an office in Warwick Street in Leamington Spa, near Codemasters, and start hiring some individual talented employees that we'd previously been either subcontracting work to or worked closely with. So I had a nice open plan office and then a small office at the front for Philip to do his uh, business meetings with and try to um, contact other publishers. I was out in the main office with the other programmers, artists and designers. So as you may be aware, we tend to keep uh, everything and so we've got all the development notes uh, from Mystery World Dizzy. So here's the uh, discs with all the source code and graphics and data and audio. We've got some of the paperwork of the actual designs, some printouts of the screenshots. Obviously this was produced towards the end. Um, we can see the sprite layouts here, um, and of course it was based on Fantasy World Dizzy. So uh, we'd obviously taken some photocopies of the map and worked out which bits would stay roughly the same and which bits we wanted to overhaul as we converted it from Z80 to 6502 and from a sprite based background system to hardware character uh, based screen mapping. So when we set about uh, designing a new Dizzy game, we'd work out the map, uh, drawing it all out on paper. So you start in the dungeon, nice colourful character set, um, using some of the sort of graphic styles that we used in our Super Robin Hood game that we'd just written on the NES. So here you can see the dungeons leading up through the castle, um, higher and higher, slightly different graphic sets to give colour, um, up to the bedrooms, up to the tower in the castle going across on our paper design uh, filling in an, a nice country landscape uh, that leads on to docks and of course around the castle you would have the drawbridge one side and then a moat on the other side 
got a well that you can jump down find out what's at the bottom of the well always a good sort of mystery element um, obviously the classic um, tree house that many of the yoke folk live in although in this one it's a little bit different because we decided to put um, a mine that they've been digging underneath the tree house which has uh, now homes a dragon another thing that was new to dizzy um, and this game was the underwater caves um, which has Dizzy swimming around trying to locate things. Um, then we've got another landscape and above that area we have some clouds with the cloud castle in and then you can see how we map the inside of the castle as further levels. Um, we've got the well um, shaft which was kind of an uh, ever vertically scrolling shaft so it made it look like it was falling a long way. Um, got the credit screen that was mapped, character mapped, it was the most efficient way of sort of laying that out. And then the story screens and the title screen. Okay, well let's have a look at the game. Yes, uh, we have uh, Pitt to thank for the artwork, fantastic artwork. We've got uh, Lucas to thank for reproducing the ROM and getting the code all back and working. And Ryza for making a prototype. And Andrew Joseph at Yoke Folk for sort of pulling everybody together and organising everybody. So thank you very much for all those people. Go on then, let's get it on. Let's uh, put the game on, let's see it fired up and working. Mm. Oh, cartridge games, they just boot straight up there. Yeah, no loading time, it's fantastic. So, here's Dizzy on the NES. Um, this is the title screen. We've animated it, sort of actually putting a, a level of the game that it pre-plays. Dizzy looks at the signpost and it's got the credits on so you can see who wrote it. Um, so the point is that um, you wanted a nice colourful uh, title screen, but um, people we want to be able to teach people about the fact that this is a puzzle game. Um, so Dizzy here, he wants to get across the river. So he's going to go and talk to characters. So it's explaining the game because uh, people might think that it's just one of these sideways scrolling platform games where you have to jump on characters to kill them. Um, but it's not. It's about working out the puzzles. So we've got little speech bubbles from the characters. Great to have a little bit of story um, and great to get the objective. So you'll find impassable areas and you need to work out how to pass them by picking up objects so you may have seen that those logs were by that hut and not noticed um, we're showing that you can open doors and go inside places um, discover things uh, it's funny that uh, we have that little conversation with a character you can't see um, but these are the fun things you think of doing so um, you find that he's got to get past the odd foe so get past that with a bit of timing and he's going to be able to now use the rope and the logs to build a bridge a little rope bridge across that river uh, why does he want to get across the river we shall see after he's got across the bridge and there we go he's found Daisy his girlfriend um, so that's the motivation that he looks very pleased with himself um, so there we go so Dizzy and Daisy go for a walk, but then they're captured by trolls. Daisy is thrown into the tower in Zax's castle, and Dizzy is thrown into a dungeon. And that's where the game starts. So now you're in the dungeon, in the castle, um, colourful location, a troll guarding the door, and you have a few things that will help you escape. Uh, so he tries bribing the troll, um, doesn't work. Um, Picking up stars. Well, here's something new. Fantasy World Dizzy didn't have any swimming, so we decided that this would be a great new feature in Mystery World Dizzy. And here's one of the uh, key features of Mystery World Dizzy, the dragon. In fact, there's two of them. Everybody loves dragons. And here we have a very familiar scene for Dizzy fans, the treehouse. Uh, we really wanted to create a sort of vertical maze, uh, the village in which the yoke folk lived. And here he is, uh, wandering around a castle, trying to find useful items to take to solve his way to escape, either to the left or to the right of the main castle. Well, that is Mystery World Dizzy, written in uh, 92, that's 25 years ago. And 30 year anniversary of Dizzy, when we first created the first 
Dizzy Game. So we've well, been watching them for five years. That's right. Um, and we're really, really pleased to be able to release it now. And anyone can play it for free at mysteryworlddizzy.com. We really hope you enjoyed this video and will enjoy playing Mystery World Dizzy. And if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Oliver Twins. Thank you very much. Goodbye.